Hello, I'm James Cooper and I fly gliders from the Gliding Club of Western Australia. Uh, I've been flying since uh, 1985 uh, and I predominantly concentrate on long distance flying and post my flights on OLC. Um, one thing that I've noticed is that when pilots have completed their training they can generally fly safely but they don't have the ability to thermal well and if you can't thermal well you'll end up landing out getting depressed and uh, probably even stopping the sport whereas if you can thermal well you'll get a great deal of enjoyment out of this amazing sport uh, that we have so I've put this video together there'll be a shot of me actually flying real life situation and give you an idea of how I fly um, it's a 21 meter SH-31 so roll rate's a little bit slow and I'm still getting used to it but um, listen and enjoy thank you so the first thing we'll look at is uh, angle of bank glider is designed to be able to fly at 45 degrees if you fly at 45 degrees you'll be able to core most thermals if you fly flatter you'll do a bigger circle and you'll be out of the uh, core to help uh, maintain the angle of bank put straws on the canopy I put them on uh, they're great for measuring and it allows me to fly very accurately I've been doing this for 20 years and it works for me and I don't see why it doesn't work for everybody else Thermaling speed. Don't fly at speeds that are too slow, but at a speed that gives you good aileron control. Many instructors teach flying too slow. The glider won't respond to your inputs if you fly too slow. One of the first things you learn when you're flying. I rarely fly slower than 55 knots, 63 mile an hour, 100 kph, dependent on your preferred system and when I'm flying with uh, ballast I'll probably be flying five kilometers sorry five knots faster you may get horizontal gusts when uh, you're flying and the air speed indicator will fluctuate ignore this fluctuation and don't try and chase the air speed indicator keep your nose on the horizon in a constant position and just let the airspeed indicator fluctuate with the horizontal gusts. Listen to the sound of the air when you're flying. That gives you an idea of the speed. If you hear that rush, you know that uh, your speed's on the way to increasing and it allows you to have your eyes out of the canopy looking for any other aircraft. The yaw string. Really important this. You may, may have been told to keep the yaw string down the middle. Uh, this is not the case when turning. There's a little diagram here, it's a bit vague. Um, the diagram shows the airstream over the canopy. So you can see that when you're going around in a circle that the yaw string will be out to the outside of the uh, circle. Yes, we know that in the picture it's not to scale, but what you'll find is that uh, the air exaggerates the effect and it'll put the yaw string about uh, 10 degrees out towards the, the outside of the thermal, effectively pointing to your outside shoulder. Um, if you fly a two-seater glider, you'll actually see that the uh, yaw string hangs out more on the front than on the back, um, with the back being nearer the centre of uh, gravity of the aircraft. So the photo shows you roughly where the yaw string should be when you're turning at 45 degrees. Accurate flying. You really need to get this. If you cannot thermal, you'll not be able to fly cross country without confidence. You will land out. You must be able to hold your position in the sky and then make adjustments and get back to a constant diameter turn 
that does not wander aimlessly around the sky. So look, let's look at how accurate we need to fly. If a pilot flies half a circle at 45 degrees and 50 knots, the circle will be 67 and a half meters in uh, radius. If after half a circle, the bank is reduced to 40 degrees, only five degrees flatter, and the speed is increased by five knots, the radius will increase to 97.5 meters, shifting the circle 60 meters. This is um, how you, if this is how you fly, you'll not be able to thermal. You can see you've done half a circle like this, flattened out, increased the speed, and you've moved the circle 50% of the, um, away from the core. So my comment is, you have to fly accurately, very accurately. Practice and don't let anything else other than perfect be good enough. So let's look at entering the turn. When you approach the thermal, you'll start to feel the pre-thermal turbulence and begin to get a bit of a push. Slow down before you get too near to the core. When you feel the vertical push reduce, you're going up at the maximum speed, as in with a car, it accelerates to maximum speed and then you feel no push in the back. At that point, give full rudder, be aggressive and feed in the aileron to balance the turn. Immediately the glider is at 45 degrees, put in opposite rudder about quarter off the centre. Bring the stick back to maintain the speed you require and keep the nose on the horizon. So let's see how we do it in the air. so well but I would like to get back in touch with the cues again. Go nice and smooth, full full rudder, full rudder, full rudder, 45 degrees, top rudder, nose on the horizon. Your string pointing to my shoulder. Don't 
like a big reds long woolly your string I can see that one that's good enough for me the big ones form turbulence over the canopy which only causes drag thank you for uh, listening and if you want any more articles on gliding go to jamescooper.com.au uh, click on the glider and then articles and there's all sorts of uh, stuff for you.